I see you're regaining consciousness. That is fine, but please be aware that the drugs in your system will probably keep you from being able to move around very much. You might be able to turn your head, but that's about it. Don't worry. The effects will wear off eventually, and they will have no real lasting effect, and no harmful ones at that. It's very effective, isn't it? I made it myself. Completely natural. I'm quite proud of it, honestly. Traditional drugs would settle in the system and they would have really bad effects on your body, particularly on your kidneys, and I certainly don't want to taint those in any way, shape, or form. They are such delicate things and certainly very underappreciated, I think. They do so much for your well-being, but they're never really thought of as often or as fondly as, say, your heart or your brain or even your lungs. And while arguably, perhaps they're not as important, they are still very vital to your survival. They regulate your fluid levels. They filter toxins from your blood. They actually contribute a lot to the care of your blood. They release the hormone that directs the production of red blood cells. They also regulate your blood pressure and keep your blood minerals in balance. Kidneys really are such a spectacular organ. Most people, of course, have two of them. But it's quite lucky that you can survive with just one, because I'm going to eat one of yours. Now I see the panic in your eyes, but don't worry, my tastes and my techniques have grown very refined over the years. It used to be that I would just rip it right out of your body and leave you to die, but no longer. I am no more that person. It took a while, but I got my urges under control. You will live, so don't worry. You won't even remember this. You will, of course, know that you've won less kidney. I'll bandage you up as best as I can before returning you to your home. I've gotten quite good at it, but I'm not a professional. When you wake up, you'll feel pain, and you'll probably have bled through your bandages at this time. So you'll want to go check yourself into the ER, where they will deliver the news. Oh, I'm sorry. Because of the drugs, it's very hard for you to speak. Could you repeat that for me? Oh, come now. I'm not a monster. I'm just me. I'm just the way that I am. And I know that you can't see me, and trust me, that is for the best. But I deserve to live just as anyone else does. I have thoughts and feelings. I have to do what I have to do to survive. I may not be a monster, 
But I am not like you. I am quite different. I cannot live on what you live on. I am not a cannibal by choice. I didn't choose this. I didn't ask to be what I am. I didn't ask to need what I need. Cannibals, as you think of them, are those who choose to feast on others. They choose to victimize and torture others for their sadistic appetites. But I don't. I don't choose to have to feast on flesh. And I don't torture or kill if I don't have to. Not anymore. I chose to put that behind me. I can survive without going to such extreme measures. I take something from you that you don't need. Something you can live without. You couldn't live without your heart or your brain, or your lungs, but one kidney, you'll be fine. I'm not greedy, and I'm not evil. If I was, I would take both of them. It would be easier for me to do so. It would be easier for me to carve you up and ration you out. But I won't. It would be even easier to just break into someone's home while they sleep and eat what I want and leave them there and do it again the next night to someone else and then again and again. But I won't do that either. I made a choice some time ago to have control over my hunger, over myself. Humans are really animals, and it is really not uncommon for many species to devour their own. Humans are one of many, in fact, although whether I am even human or not is up for debate. However, as I was saying, many species in the animal kingdom feast on their own. Sharks are a commonly known one, particularly sand tiger sharks. In the womb of their mother, the ones who develop first will consume their smaller siblings to increase their rate of survival. Polar bears, even, though it happens much more rarely, it does happen. An adult bear tearing into the body of a juvenile. The speculation is that they are so desperate for food due to the mess your species has caused on the planet that they are turning to eating their own cubs. Quite tragic, and really humans are, to blame for that one. Let's see. Oh, I bet you didn't know this one. Hamsters, as cute and cuddly as they are. It is not uncommon for a mother to eat her newborn offspring. It's believed that this could be due to a need for extra protein, as the mother lactates. However, domestic hamsters can become confused if a human scent is left on the babies, which will drive her to eat them. Interesting how the human element comes into play once more. The point that I'm trying to make here is that what I'm doing what I am. It may be different, but that doesn't mean it has to be unnatural. I used to fight it, 
sometimes push it away until I exploded and devoured an entire street. But I've accepted what I am, and I've accepted that I cannot change it. So I choose to control it, rather than have it control me. Would you not do the same in my shoes? Of course you would. Self-preservation is the strongest force in this world. The need to survive. And that's what I'm doing. Surviving. There is no wrong in that. Well, that's enough chatter, I think. You wouldn't believe how many times I've given this speech. It's a wonder why, considering no one will ever remember it. I suppose I just have no one else to tell it to. As you can imagine, I live a very solitary life. But enough about me, I want to thank you for the gift of life you'll be giving me. Because of you, I will persevere. Because you were in the right place at the right time. Fate has brought us together, and there is always a reason for that. Now relax and close your eyes. When you wake up, you'll be in your own bed. Good night.